what happens if you don't take the skin off, right? So you will preserve the mineral content and you will still provide more surface area for bacteria action because you crush the beans before fermentation, yeah? That means it will have higher vitamin and spermidin content while keeping the mineral content, right? So by crushing the beans before fermentation and not taking the skin off, yeah, you get the benefit of both hikiwari natto and ito hiki natto. How to make hikiwari natto at home from rice store or steps? That's something I'm going to talk about today, so stick around. Hi, my name is Hachiak Takamiya, the Natto King. I am the author of Natto Unleashed and the Ikigai Diet. So, I will share with you how to make hikiwari natto at home using rice store stick. So please stay until the end, right? Now, so what is hikiwari natto? Yeah, it is crushed to natto. It's a different kind of natto from regular natto. The difference is the beans are smaller because beans are crushed, yeah? And you crush the soybeans before fermenting them and then that provides more surface area for bacterial action that result in increasing the content of vitamin E, K, and spermidin, yeah, which are all good for anti-aging. Therefore, hikiwari natto becomes even more powerful than regular natto for anti-aging, yeah? However, you also take the skin off, the skin of the beans when you crush them, yeah? And that results in reducing mineral content. So although hikiwari natto has more vitamin and spermidin, it has less mineral such as calcium. So regular natto, which is called itohiki natto in Japanese, has more mineral, right? So in that sense, you cannot really say either is better. Yeah, they are different, right? For details, please watch my other video, Hikiwari Natto versus Regular Natto, which is better, yeah? Now, what happens if you don't take the skin off, right? So you will preserve the mineral content, and you will still provide more surface area for bacteria action because you crush the beans before fermentation, yeah? That means it will have higher vitamin and spermidin content while keeping the mineral content, right? So by crushing the beans before fermentation and not taking the skin off, yeah, you get the benefit of both hikiwari natto and ito hiki natto, right? So this will be super hikiwari natto. And of course, you get to choose, you know, organic and local beans and of course, GM-free beans and so on. Well, when you buy hikiwari natto, you don't have much selection, yeah? Therefore, I think making hikiwari natto, hikiwari natto at home is the answer. Yeah, in this way, you can create super hikiwari natto, right? So today, I'll share with you how to make super hikiwari natto from rice store at home. So please watch the video until the end. The procedures, yeah, the procedures are pretty much the same with making regular natto at home home, but there is one difference, yeah? So first you soak the beans, and then after soaking the beans, you cut the beans. And then steaming the beans, disinfecting in boiling water, and inoculating bacillus subtilis to the beans, fermenting the beans, and cooling the natto in the fridge. Things you need organic soybeans and local soybean, GM-free soybeans, a pressure cooker, a yogurt maker, a pressure cooker rack, a stainless steel steam rack or a steamer that fits inside the pressure cooker, a cotton cloth, and rice store sticks. 
So first process, first step, soaking the beans with three times as much water, 12 to 24 hours. Maybe in winter time, you need 24 hours, summertime, 12 hours is enough, yeah? Um, but if you want to soak the beans for 24 hours in the summertime, make sure to change the water once, uh, yeah, after maybe 12 hours, right? <clears throat> the length of soaking is quite important. So I like to soak the beans tw for 24 hours, even in summertime. Now, so the cutting the beans. So after soaking the beans, you want to cut them, or you can use a blender and then, yeah, blend them. Yeah, whatever the way is okay. I, I just don't have a blender, so I just cut uh, manually. And then, so skin does come off a little bit, but not, not all of them. And the thing is, you keep the skin. You don't, you don't remove it. In the regular stewardinato making process, yeah, you <clears throat> crush the beans before soaking them, and then you blow air to take the skin off. You basically separate the beans and the skin. Yeah, but you don't want to do it, yeah, uh, in this process. Okay, then steaming the beans. Yeah, so this is a pressure cooker rack, and this is a stainless steam, uh, steel steam rack. And you put the uh, pressure cooker rack into the pressure cooker, and then uh, add water. You fill the water up to cover this rack. And then you put the steam rack on top of it, and then you put the the crushed or cut soybeans. Yeah, make sure to keep the skin. Yeah, you put the skin with the beans, and then you close the lid and then set the pressure to high, and uh, you kind of pressure steam it for 15 minutes with a high frame, yeah? 15 minutes or until the pressure comes on, yeah? So when the pressure comes on, you turn the gas, da gas down to a low frame. And then next, uh, with a low frame, you pressure steam it for 30 minutes. And then 30 minutes after, you turn the gas off and wait for another 15 minutes until the pressure comes off. Again, uh, it can be 20 minutes or 10 minutes, depending on your pressure cooker. And then, but you need to wait until the pressure comes off completely. And then this time can be shortened because beans are crushed. Yeah, uh, usually it takes less time than uh, regular soybeans. Now, disinfecting in boiling water. So while waiting, while waiting, you prepare rice storo and you cut them into short sticks and then wash them well to take dirt off. Uh, put them in boiling water for one minute with 100 degrees centigrade or 100, 212 degrees Fahrenheit. And this brief exposure to high temperatures kills most germs that may be present on the storo while triggering the heat resistance bacillus subtilis to form protective spores. Yeah, so this way you can separate bacillus subtilis from other germs. And then you cleanse any other item that you'll be using for the fermentation, such as the cotton cloth, and then the container uh, inside the yogurt maker, and then the ladle that you'll be using to remove soybeans uh, to the container. Now, inoculating Bacillus subtilis. Okay, so now beans are, uh, beans are steamed. Yeah, steaming is done. See, you still have the skin. Yeah, that is the key. And then you uh, basically squash the bean to check if it is soft enough. Yeah, if you could uh, squeeze it easily with your thumb and index finger, that means bean is soft enough. If it's not, you need to pressure steam the beans a little longer. And then uh, using the ladle, which you just cleansed, yeah, uh, move the soybeans into the container. And then you stick rice or rice toro sticks, which you just cleansed. 
and then you cover it with a cotton cloth, which also you cleansed, yeah, but leave a little space at the edge uh, so that the oxygen can come in. Now, the, the, the reason why you want to cover it with a cotton cloth is you want to keep the moisture inside. Yeah, you need a moisture while uh, during the fermentation, but you also need oxygen. So you need to have a little open space. Then you close the lid. And then now setting up for fermentation. So you put the container in the yogurt maker and then cover it with a paper towel like this and keep the lid open slightly so that you can let oxygen to come in. Now, usually to make natto, uh, you want to set the temperature between 40 to 45 degrees centigrade, which is 104 to 113 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, this temperature is critical because if it's low, like around like 35 or 30 degrees, other germs can be activated. But this 40 to 45 degrees centigrade is the best temperature for not talking, like Bacillus subtilis, to become active. Yeah. So if you keep the temperature in this range, then Bacillus subtilis becomes active and it doesn't let other germs to, to be active. Yeah. But if the temperature becomes low, sometimes other germs become active and then the you know the beans becomes bad and so on. So this happens when you use other methods that you cannot maintain the temperature throughout the fermentation process. And then if the temperature goes down, then sometimes other germs become active and so on. Yeah. So that is the convenience of using the yogurt maker because you can maintain the temperature throughout the 24 hours period. <laughs> now, so usually you, you, you kind of ferment it for about 24 hours, but with the, you know, crushed beans, it takes less time. So maybe, you know, 20 hours is okay. And with the temperature too, I usually set it at 40 degrees centigrade. Um, yeah, but maybe in the beginning, you, you can probably do with the 45 degrees and 24 hours to, to make sure that you, uh, your fermentation time and temperature is enough. And then you start the yogurt maker. Okay, so after 20 hours, you open the lid and this is how it is. Yeah, you see the white film again, that means beans are fermented. Now, when you compare it with the regular soybeans, again, this one got some white forms, but you probably have more white yeah, films. Then you take the rice toro sticks out, yeah, and it becomes like that. And then you mix the natto and then see the yeah stickiness, yeah. So it became natto, became hikiwari natto. And then one more step, you need to cool the natto. So you put the container in the fridge and leave it for 24 hours. That's it. Yeah, that's how you make hikiwari natto at home. Now, so to sum up, first you soak the beans, yeah, uh, 12 to 24 hours, and then cut the beans. Uh, you can use a blender too, if you like. And then keep the skin when you put the beans into the pressure cooker, and then steaming the beans, 15 minutes with a high frame, 30 minutes with a low frame, and 15 minutes after turning the gas off. Inoculate Bacillus subtilis with rice toro sticks and ferment the beans for 20 hours at 40 degrees. Then cooling the natto in the fridge for 24 hours. Right. So for the process of making natto, I made another video called how to make natto at the home from rice toro sticks, the complete guide. Yeah, well, actually the title is called how to make natto at home, the complete guide. Yeah, um, so please, please watch that. Yeah.
And then also the book, Natto Unleashed, has a chapter on DIY Natto, which tells you how to make Natto at home, including Hikiwari Natto. And uh, the book covers the health benefits of Natto, recipes, navigating Natto's taste, and Natto hacking, how to optimize uh, Natto eating for biohacking. The book is available on Amazon as Kindle and print-on-demand paperback. Okay, thank you for watching. Um, now, so making Hiwari Natto at home is the ultimate answer because you can change Hikiwari Natto yeah, completely to make it even better than Itohiki Natto. Okay, so again, my name is Hachiyaki Takamiya. I am the author of Natto Unleashed and the Ikigai Diet. If you like this video, please give me your thumb up and subscribe to my channel. And please leave your comment. Yeah, have you ever made Hikiwari Natto at home? Oh, thank you. Well, I'll see you in the next video. Live with you, Ikigai!